Vettel's been set up for the 2021 season Formula One has banned single-use plastic water bottles. As head of PR for F1, can you confirm this? Oh, yes, yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. It said teams will be encouraged to refill containers from multiple water stations in the paddock. What about elsewhere around the circuit? Well, uh, we're also going to advise um, the camera crews at the Bahrain test this weekend to wear camelback pouches that contain enough water to ensure that they are properly hydrated throughout the day. And where will these be sourced from? Um, well, we're in the desert, so there are plenty of camels around, so we'll use them. Really? Uh, yes. And what about other users of plastic at races? Oh, yes. Well, from now on, all paddock passes will be made of recycled plastic. Look. This is just a pass from the 2001 season, with the year changed from 2001 to 2021 with a biro, and the name Michael Schumacher crudely changed with a felt marker to say Mick Schumacher. I know, right? You know what they say? Reuse, recycle, repurpose? Well, I suppose it's a start. Welcome to Gareth Jones on Speed. I'm Gareth. She's Sarah. Hello. He's Alex Goy. Hi. And he's Zog. Hello. Guys, we've got an awful lot to coordinate here with so many of us in disparate locations via Skype. And a lot to discuss because we're getting close to the start of the Formula One season now. We're starting to see the cars emerge. Alex, have you been following the car launches in any way? I know you're not a big F1 fan. Ish. I am familiar with some of them, but not all. Good, that's good. Well, we'll pick on our specialist areas. Zoggy, did you watch any of the launches live? I didn't watch any of them live, but I've been checking out the new liveries and keeping an eye on developments up to speed. And Sarah, have you got a favourite of the teams that you've seen so far? Uh, I did have a favourite. I did watch some of the McLaren live. Well, Daniel Ricciardo was involved, the Australian, so I watched some of that. <laughs> Um, and I, like Zog, I have seen lots of the pictures that come through and some of them I really like. Some of them I'm a bit surprised. I think it's exciting and I think the world of Formula One is very buoyed. They're very sort of uplifted and excited about the season to come. I thought it was interesting, actually. Gareth, I'm going to let you lead on this and you tell us which one we're going to talk about first. Okay. Because I've got lots to say. All right, we're going to go through this alphabetically, which is going to take ages for us to get away from the A's because we've got so many teams starting with A. A. For instance, <laughs> Alfa Romeo Racing Orlen. It's probably pronounced Orlen, but Orlen, if you're Welsh, that's how I read it. I'm slightly baffled about Alfa Romeo's car this year. As far as I can tell, their chassis is the C41, which follows the Sauber numbering for the chassis because the team is still run by Sauber. But last year's car was the C39, which begs the question, what happened to the C40? Lots of accidents. (laughs) (laughs) Lots of accidents. So they've just gone straight through to a C41. So they've just skipped C40. Maybe there's like a taboo around the number 40. Maybe it's a Swiss bad luck number. Who knows? Yeah. The Chinese have suspicions around numbers, don't they? They have those Chinese number sticks, don't they? Yeah. I think, was it 166 is the equivalent of 13 if you're Chinese? You know, we consider 13 to be an unlucky number. They consider one, no, 164 they consider to be an unlucky number, which is why the Alfa Romeo 164 was sold as the Alfa Romeo 166 in Chinese markets. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. I know eight is considered a lucky number. A fortuitous number. Yeah. Well, I would believe it because some people are into numerology and if anyone is, it's the Chinese. I know they have those number sticks that can be sort of superstitious in a way and they all have meaning different numbers. So who knows? But it is now the Alfa Romeo C41. I think it looks good. And I'm excited about Mick Schumacher. I'm really excited about that. The car looks very much like last year, except it's a deeper shade of red that seems to be the most significant change now they've gone for more of a sort of a maroon color is that a traditional alfa romeo color zog do you know that? i don't know if it's color balance on different pictures i mean to me the red looks pretty similar i think i think there's maybe a bit less red a bit more white overall you know it looked good last year 
It looks good this year. It's a tidy look. Yeah, it's a pretty race car. I like it. I think it's a tidy look. You know, the traditional Alfa Romeo cars, like the Alfa Romeo Spider and things like that, I think the colour red is similar. No? I think it's a more crimson, scarlet sort of colour. I like it. Do you remember, Alex, a few years ago, all the Alfa Romeos on show stands at the motor shows were all the same colour. They were all this sort of crimson. Yeah, that very deep, slightly shiny red that almost looked like a Ferrari colour, but definitely wasn't honest, boss. Yeah. Yeah, as, is it that sort of view? I'm just amazed that an Italian team has gone for a red car. Who would have thought it? <laughs> but they're not an Italian team, because if you type in Alfa Romeo F1 into your browser, it takes you to a website sauber-group.com which is Swiss so they're sort of losing their identity there we'll move on Scuderia Alfa Tauri Honda with the AT02 which is basically the same car as last year I believe because they're only allowed to tweak the car a little bit Zog aren't they well they're allowed is it two development tokens and Mercedes have been very cagey about exactly where they've used theirs but it's probably aero have they not just fed them into Lewis Hamilton? Go faster, go faster! <laughs> <laughs> How shall I do that? Oh, no idea, you're the expert. How Eat do... this development token. It's the first time I've heard that phrase and I love it. Here's a development token. You may use this for one development. It's like something you get in Monopoly, isn't it? Oh, I picked up a development token card. That would be a great version of Formula One Monopoly right now. It must be a nightmare to police. I mean, you know, exa- I'm not sure exactly what the regulations are, or the rules by which they decide exactly how much you're allowed to change in which area but it's part of the effort to keep costs down and it's a good effort seems to be working so far yeah this alpha towery i can't decide whether i like this look or not you know i think i need to see it moving i need to see it on a racetrack before i can make my mind up well, Zog, if you'd like to see it moving, you can simply go to the ScuderiaAlphatauri.com website and they haven't got a static picture of the car. They've got a virtual version of the car of it running on a sort of a rolling road in front of you. <laughs> and I know that because it's on my monitor <laughs> as I speak right now. And it looks black rather than this sort of navy blue that it's supposed to be so they could have sorted the colours out couldn't they maybe I need a new monitor I like the Alpha Tauri yeah I'm looking at oh I see what you mean yeah it's smart isn't it Sarah I really like it I like it it's like a teal kind of blue I like it it's classy it's different teal it's like a teal blue it was darker than that I'd say teal would be lighter wouldn't it it's not quite navy is it but I do really yeah, like it colour. I think it's classy it I think it's good I think it's a really good colour for like a number two team colour for the Red Bull it's understated and it's nice and it's less white than it was last year which is really confusing because we had an awful lot of very white dominated liveries last year and it was hard to spot a car you could mix up the Williams with the Alpha Tauri very easily last year much less so this year Okay, on to Alpine. Now, they're a new team to Formula One. No, they're not. It's just the rebranded Renault team. But they have gone for a full-scale rebrand where they're really hammering home that it's Alpine by using the same colours that they do for the Alpine Signatech WEC team. Alex, have you seen this car? I have. I'm looking at it right now. The one thing that is brilliant about Alpine, trying to distance itself from Renault, is, of course, hiring former Renault driver Fernando Alonso. (laughs) (laughs) They'll have Flavio Briatore back next, won't they? (laughs) Yeah. Flav just sat in the pit garage, sweating gently, hey, staring at things. I love Alpine. <laughs> Little touch of menace nearby. It, yeah, you know what? It looks cool. It does look cool, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a real looker. I love that sort of slash down the back. You know, slash of colour. The whole Alpine thing to bring it to sort of win on Sunday, sell on Monday. Like the whole Renault Sport thing is going the way of the dodo and then Alpine is going to be the quick Renault stuff. Yeah, they've struggled here, haven't they? Because do you remember when Gordini was the sporting Renault brand? Just thinking about that, the Renault Sport Twingo 133 Gordini, which was a great little roller skate, tiny little thing, and you could fling it round country lanes, but it had weird stripes down it. Yeah, that was a fairly recent car in the last sort of 12 years or so. Yes. But back in the 70s and the 80s, Renault performance cars were called Gordini in Britain because they couldn't use the Alpine brand in the UK. 
because Chrysler owned the Alpine brand at the time ah. in the UK. And that's why the Chrysler mm. Alpine was sold as the Simca 1309 or 1609 in Europe. It goes way back. But there's one thing about the Alpine that slightly bugs me. You know, it's got this gorgeous metallic blue and it's got a bit of white and a bit of red because it is an Anglo-French team and that works for both countries. Yes. But the upshot is, if you take a glance at it, there's something about it that says National British Rent-A-Car. You know, that's a red, white and blue. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I don't know. Not to me. To be honest to me, it's yet another red, white and blue car. Mm. You know, they're, 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 that's a colour scheme that we see quite a lot of. It's almost as though it's a common flag. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. But I <laughs> think it's great. The BBC is saying that the striking blue paintwork plus a splash of red and white is a nod to the team's twin bases in Paris and Oxfordshire, like you said, Gareth. So I suppose they're trying to be true to their own kind. Yeah. Which as it turns out, is red, white, and blue. I thought they could have done a little bit better, but they are probably just being true to who they really are. And it's very sort of a nod to the UK and a nod to the French, isn't it? And it's beautiful. I really like the big A on the back because if they don't do very well, they could just point to it as though the car's doing a big Gallic shrug. Eh. (laughs) <laughs> I wonder if the engine is actually Oof. going to be badged Alpine this year or they're going to call the engine a Renault. I know that they've moved maintenance of the engine from Renault Sport or Alpine, whatever it's called this week, to Mechachrome. Mechachrome have got the franchise, the gig to look after it, like they did a long time ago when Renault stepped out of F1. So could this be Renault ultimately sliding away from F1 subtly, leaving through the side door, through the Alpine door? We'll find out. Okay, next team. We'll start with Alex for this one, because I'm sure he's got tons to say about this. The Aston Martin Now, is it cognizant or cognizant Formula One team? How would you say it, Alex? I wouldn't bother with the second bit. It doesn't matter. Aston Martin has its own team and that's excellent because it means I might actually watch a Formula One race. Yeah. (laughs) Very good of Mr. Stroll to take a specific interest in my wanting to watch the sport by buying the team and painting a car green and sticking the wings on it. I think it looks mega, that thing. It looks really, really cool. It's also going to be flanked by a medical car and a safety car, which is just ace. I'm really looking forward to it. I will actually watch a race, which I haven't done in many increments of years. Do you actually have a contract for Sky F1? Or are you going to watch it on highlights? I'll probably watch the highlights or just follow Twitter. Right. Which is what I do when I'm sort of doom scrolling of a Sunday and a race is on, just see people going, oh, that's a bad accident. And then the F1 account will inevitably tweet it. But hopefully the Aston Martin will be on the top step every race, destroying Mercedes dominance. Actually, what I will say on a sort of vaguely personal note, other than the fact that, yeah, I finally have skin in the game because, you know, I've got an old vantage on the drive and I love it to bits. And I'm one of those people that has vague brand loyalty. Like I will now support the Aston Martin in Formula One. When the pictures came out of Vettel testing ages ago and there were like some spy snaps, fair play to that man for not trying to do any awful hairstyle cover ups or anything like that. And proudly admitting to being a bold man with the horseshoe. (laughs) Fair play. I was a bit gutted they didn't let him do that at the incredibly awkward car unveil with Gemma Arteta just staring at them going, so, cars. (laughs) (laughs) He kept his cap on throughout, did he? He kept his cap on, which I was a little bit disappointed to see. But no, fair play to Vettel for not trying some awful cover-up job. Sarah, as our colour expert, (laughs) what colour would you describe that Aston Martin body to be. You know what? I actually think that this looks exactly like a Jaguar, one of those Jaguars with a white circle, like a myrtle green, which I think that old school Jaguar sports car is probably my favourite old school sports car. But I would have thought that the Aston Martin would have come out pitch black. I'm surprised they've gone for like the myrtle green. I'd say it looks like a myrtle green colour, like the old school Jaguar sports car. Isn't the Aston Martin's colour the same as the old Aston F1 yeah. and Le Mans races? Is yeah. Because they did a DB11 in it, the 59 special. Okay. No, it was a DBS Superleggera road car and they did 59 of them 
to represent the Aston Martin 59 Le Mans win, and it was all in that colour. Yeah, the DB1, wasn't it? DBR1. DBR1, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the DBR1 that raced and won at Le Mans in 1959. Yes. Was in a kind of, I would call it, metallic ivy. Oh, yeah, metallic ivy. Well, it's kind of sort of within the gamut of the variations on British racing green. Yeah. It's kind of slightly metallic British racing green to my eyes on this picture. Not quite as light as the old DB4 Zagato colour that is particularly beautiful. Yeah, I know what you mean, Zoki. It's very similar, isn't it? But yeah, but rather like the colour that a lot of the Astons have raced in GTE at Le Mans in recent years. It is a stunning look. I like what you said about the spectrum of British racing green because people say, oh yes, the car's British racing green. There is no one British racing green. There have been a myriad variety of colours in the green yeah. part of the spectrum which have raced representing British teams. So this is yet another one. I think it looks great, doesn't it? And the pink highlights it, doesn't it? Yeah, that sort of pink or red. They say pink. It looks a lot redder to me. But, you know, the colours are beautiful, that gorgeous, strong green, Aston Martin logo on the side, beautiful look to it. The only thing I'm not wild about is on the rear wing, that JCB logo. Ah, I see, I was just about to mention that. In terms of colour, it's an offset, isn't it? But historically... Well, but it's also, I know that JCB has been associated with some world speed records. Yeah. But when you think of fast-moving vehicle, you know, JCB isn't the first thing. JCB suggests a big thing sitting on a building site or something that's holding you up on a country back road. It doesn't suggest fast-moving vehicles. But there are two reasons, I think, why JCB can be on there. It's a great British engineering firm with a brand known worldwide, just like Aston Martin is. Wherever you go in the world, you see JCBs. Yep, fair enough. And second of all, Alex, you might know more about this than me. I'm not certain. But JCB, those initials stand for J.C. Bamford, who is the guy who established the company. And if I remember right, one of the two people who established the original version of Aston Martin was called Bamford. Was it the same person? Was it the same company? Was it the same family? I don't know. Answers on a postcard to Gareth Jones on speed, etc., etc., yeah. There will be a colossal massive nerd out there who knows... Fun fact, David Brown of Aston Martin DB yep. started his career in Earth Movers and things like that. That's right. And the other David Brown, who owns David Brown Automotive, also did diggers and stuff and then sold a big chunk of his business to Earth Movers. So when I was doing some reading, I was like, hang on, I've met that David. I thought he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than one David Brown, just to add confusion. So many. I love the Aston Martin. I'm happy to call it an Aston Martin. And I like the way that the Aston Martin Formula One team and the Aston Martin road cars have combined their website now. If you want to find out about F1, it takes you to the AstonMartin.com website, as does the car site. Well done, Lawrence Stroll, for pulling that whole thing together. As have Alpine. Alpine, their website deals with the car and the Formula One team as well. Very good. Okay, next team. Scuderia Ferrari mission window. Now, we haven't seen this car yet, but we can suppose it's going to be red, can't we? Yes. I mean, 2 plus 2 does tend to equal red when it comes to Ferrari. This mission window thing, is that stealth advertising for tobacco? Yes. Right, OK. Oh, because they did that campaign ages ago about being the winningest or something like that? Probably. Awful. I'm honestly still baffled by the mission window thing. It's a really odd bit of branding, naming, logoing. Half of the time you look at it, you think it says Minnow. Yeah. Yeah, I still don't get it. But the Ferrari, which, yeah, I think is being launched tomorrow, it's going to look like a Ferrari. It's going to look like a fast, beautiful race car. I don't think we're going to get any surprises there. And it's going to look like last year's Ferrari. Probably. Because it has, it has to. to. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they won't have changed it that much. It's Ferrari. It's the tradition. You know what? I really love the Ferrari red. I have actually was doing a bit of research this week about getting a Ferrari red Vespa. Because I just think the Ferrari yes. red is a good Ferrari red colour. So. I think they call it Rosso red, don't they? Which is basically Italian for red. Is it? Great. I love it. So, yeah, I assume it'll be Ferrari red tomorrow when it comes out. Sarah, I'd love to see you on a red Vespa. Nice. 
I really want to read Vespa. I've been doing some research, actually, and some of my friends have been looking. So who knows? By the end of the summer, I could be sending you some photos of me driving a red Vespa. Ferrari red Vespa, that is. <laughs> Do it. Get it. Good call. Two things, though, Sarah. You're going to need an open face 60s helmet and you need to take up smoking because all Italians smoke whilst riding scooters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Has to be a mission mm, winnow okay, moment. Okay, all right, I'll try. Okay, next team, Zoggy. Hello. The team is actually called Ural Carly Haas F1 team. The drivers, as we know, are Little Mickey Schumacher and Nikita Marzipan. The car is the VF21 and the colour of the car is either American, French, British or Russian, depending on your point of view. If you're Peter Windsor, it's good to see the American flagger. I believe it was Peter Windsor. Famed, storied Formula One journalist and also rich energy collaborator said, oh, it's great to see the red, white and blue. You know, it's good to see America represent. No, no. The, the Russian flag, F1 has said you can't fly the Russian flag because of reasons I don't know, but they can't do it. I think it's to do with doping. And whether it's from the FIA or from another sporting body, I believe it's to do with Russian officials being convicted of doping athletes. Right. And so okay. you're basically not allowed to use the Russian flag in international sport. I believe that's the root of it. Unless you're painting a car for a Russian chap to drive... Precisely. In which case you can use red, white and blue because red, white and blue is, as we know, a popular colour scheme for race cars. If you look at the Wikipedia entry for Formula One 2021, every driver has their national flag next to them, Mm. apart from Nikita Mazepin, who won't be allowed to fly the Russian flag and enter as a Russian driver. He will have to drive as an independent driver because it's not just the FIA, it's international sporting regulations because of Russia's dreadful history in terms of being entirely legal in sport with drugs. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. And does it look any good? Um, Not really. I mean, it's uh, a bit mundane, isn't it? It looks a bit like the sort of Parisian Portuguese themed restaurant down the road from me. Lots of chintz and like pictures of stuff (laughs) on badly laminated boards outside. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Hash car has looked better in the past than it does this year. Uh, At the moment, it looks like, you know, when you go to a motorway service station... And there on the shelves, alongside the chocolate peanuts, there are really cheap knockoff toys of Formula One cars. Mm. And it can't say the branding of actual teams on it. It says stuff like racing team. Yes, yes. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> that. A 70s knockoff of a team. And one last thing about the Haas car. If you go to the Haas website... There are no pictures of this year's car on it. Hmm. Maybe they just haven't updated it yet. It does look very retro, though, Gareth. I do agree. It looks very retro. Yeah. And I think it, it, it yeah. looks more French than the Alpine car. It looks very sort of French. <laughs> Sarah, you've got to learn to say Alpine. Oh, though. my bad. It's Alpine. Alpine. <laughs> the French will never forgive you. Alpine. Okay, next team, McLaren. Sarah, we'll let you lead on this. The McLaren (laughs) F1 team, the MCL 35M. And it's got M at the end because McLaren have got Mercedes engines again. Hooray. What does the car look like? I think it looks great. I mean, it's definitely, you know, orange and blue, and it's very far removed from red, white, and blue. (laughs) And, yeah, it's good. I think it's a slight variation from last year, not as orange as last year, but it's a standout McLaren car. Everyone knows that that's the the McLaren colours and it's in tradition it's on point but is it on racing point I did a Formula 1 joke Gareth are you proud no I'm very pro. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that it looks good. It looks McLaren. And I think that hopefully they'll do very well this year. That's for sure. Yes. Yeah, I think they're the team who stand the best chance of making a step up over where they were last year because they were on the march before and now they've got proper engines. I'm slightly disappointed that they didn't evolve the paint scheme a little bit further. But I do think that the orange and blue works really well as a contrast. I'd like to have seen a bit more golf colours on there, and I'm sure you'd agree, Zog. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm always down with more golf branding. I love the McLaren orange. I actually preferred the look of last year's car. This is a little bit meh. You know, the orange-blue combo is a good, strong colour combo, but they, I think, haven't used it particularly well on that body. But I agree that McLaren have got a good shot at 
taking a step up this year. Well, they've been making good progress. They've got two very strong drivers in the car this year. They don't call it orange, their paint scheme, though, Zog, do they? Uh, it's papaya, I believe. Correct. Papaya, yeah. yes, yes. And why does it say a better tomorrow on the side of the car? How do they know? Because it can't be worse than last year. <laughs> <laughs> Fair comment. I think we have the answer. Okay, Mercedes AMG Petronas, or Petronas rather. We all say Petronas, but it's not, it's Petronas. The F1 W12 E Performance, to give it its excessively long name. Again, a variation on last year's car, a variation on last year's paint scheme but without those myriad stars and they've got amg plastered all over the engine cover instead there's a good reason for that probably isn't there i guess they want people to remember the name amg a bit more i guess they want to boost the amg visibility more amg less mercedes i've always liked the mercedes colors they've tended to produce i think very sleek looking liveries I don't love this as much as some of the previous years. There's something in the way that the cloud of AMGs all over the engine cover is a bit messy, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, that bright light turquoise and the black with splash of red and silver is a very strong colour combo. Always looks good to me. So, yeah, it looks good, but could be better. And the message here, I suppose, because they haven't switched back to silver, is that black lives still matter. I don't know if that's part of the thinking in the delivery, but maybe, yeah, I don't know. I can't speak to that. I think it probably saved the money with Lewis's contract that Lewis said, look, if you continue to paint the car black and support some of the things I support, I won't charge you so much. I'm serious. I think they'd have used something more explicit visually if that was part of the deal yeah if that was going to be the case they probably double down that's the kind of thing we need to do some actual reading on i think okay let's go on to red bull racing honda very little to say about this car it's the r16b a slightly modded version of last year's car and at a glance you couldn't tell it from last year's car bar one thing it doesn't have aston martin written on it anymore of course but does have honda hybrid plastered on it so that's the important message here honda's last year in formula one will they deliver the engine that will allow them to beat mercedes the red bull's always been a good looking car yeah like i say it looks pretty much the same, the same as it did last year but without the slightly baffling as it was aston martin branding yeah it looked good before it looks good now alex how do you feel about red bull as a brand do you drink red bull do you love the car no no i don't do energy drinks anymore the last energy drink i drank was rich energy <laughs> oh <laughs> oh my word that's that's a shocking admission and then i gave your man porter five tins of it to take away to feed <laughs> to various people i am holding one up to the camera i still have speak. four cans of that vile p in my house somewhere <laughs> one is in the guest bog i know that much Sarah, you're a go-getter. Do you drink energy drinks? Do you drink Red Bull? Uh, you know what? No time recently, but back in the day, I would drink an energy drink, yeah. Maybe on a night out with some vodka, Ooh. but not really on like a day-to-day -day basis. But I've never really tried those energy drinks that were renowned for causing trouble. Um, Remember nights out? Yeah, look, I, I don't mind Red Bull drinks, but they can be quite... Heart palpitating, can't they? <laughs> Have you moved away emotionally from Red Bull now? Because Ricardo hasn't been involved for so long now. Do you have no emotional link with that team? as an Australian yeah not as much you're right I did I did really love Red Bull you know I thought Daniel Ricciardo was very good for them and I suppose in hindsight and years to come we'll all work out whether that was the right decision for him or not to leave Red Bull but yeah look I think the livery this year it still looks top nick I love the colour of the navy blue and I think like um, Zog said you know it still looks like a really good Red Bull car and yeah I'm not as emotionally involved you're right but yeah I think the car is good and I think they'll hopefully or probably be up there in the top three or four so we'll see which takes us to the last team on the grid in every possible way alphabetically and usually at the back let's hope not this year williams racing who have gone for the most dramatic of rebranding this year as they're under new management by what are they called doralton capital capital Cap the new people who own them bless you that is a wicked looking bit of design in my opinion i think it's glorious would you agree alex uh yes 
ish. That sounds like a no to me. <laughs> I think it looks really retro. I mean, they've stuck with some of their traditions and they've still brought forward what they've done before, but it has an element of very retro. Yeah. It's a Windows 95 screensaver. I think it looks European. The way it comes across to me is the front looks great, the back looks great. They're just from two different cars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, they are. You know? That, 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 yeah, that's it. Well, let's hope the team comes together and that they actually produce a car that is one working unit this year. You guys, thank you for the review of the liveries of the cars of the 2021 Formula One season. Just Capito, as the new CEO of Williams Racing, how do you feel about being in charge of the launch of the Williams FW43B for the 2021 F1 season? Oh, I'm very, very proud. Williams is a team with a tremendous heritage and I'm thrilled to be the one taking this forward. But the launch didn't go exactly as planned, did it? No, that's quite correct. We had originally planned to use an augmented reality app to allow our fans to interact not only with our drivers, but also a ritual model of a car in a real environment. Augmented reality? You mean like the Pokemon Go app, which allows you to see a Pokemon in your living room or garden and catch it? Well, I wouldn't have put it quite like that myself, but yes, exactly like that. So why didn't you use the app in the launch in the end? Because, unfortunately, the security of our app was compromised by hackers. Oh, that's awful. Very serious. Was any of the personal data of app users lost or stolen? No, luckily, we were able to intervene before that actually happened. So what did happen? Well, when one of our IT team checked the app beforehand, they discovered that it made George Russell appear as Pikachu and Nicholas Latifi as Jigglypuff. And the car itself evolved from Bulbasaur into Venusaur. That's truly awful to hear. Oh, it's not so bad, really. It actually earned me 800,000 experience points and made me into a level 41 Pokemon master. So, win-win. Do you want to trade? Oh, what have you got? Garrett Jones at speed! The Formula One season gets us all worked up and slightly excited as we get closer and closer to it. But there was some even more significant motorsport news, in my opinion anyway, that emerged in the last couple of weeks. And that is that we're going to get a new team in the highest echelon of the World Endurance Championship, and therefore, Le Mans. I'm talking about the very exciting news that Ferrari are coming back to endurance racing. Zog, this is massive news, isn't it? It's fantastic, yeah, wonderful news. And I think, I guess it says that what the ACO have done in redrafting the rules for the future of endurance racing and the future of Le Mans has paid off. You know, they've got manufacturers back in after losing Audi, Porsche, Peugeot, and with Toyota being the only manufacturer that was still in the top tier, LMP1 at the end. You know, in 2023, which is the year that Ferrari have said they'll be coming back with their new car. They'll be up against Toyota, Peugeot, Audi, Porsche, Bicollars, Acura. And I bet they're afraid of the threat from Bicollars, aren't they? That's oh, the- <laughs> they'll be quaking in their boots. Yeah, so well done ACO, well done Ferrari. I'm really stoked for the prospect of seeing Ferrari competing in 2023. It's going to be fantastic. I am. Gareth, remember when we went to see the movie Le Mans? Yep. So when Ferrari coming back to Le Mans is going back to all those times that Ferrari took on Ford, the famed 1960s where I think Ferrari won Le Mans outright a total of nine times yep. so it's going to be very exciting to see Ferrari up there and taking on those battles so hopefully history will repeat itself and the, I absolutely love that movie and I thought for Ford versus Ferrari those battles were really exciting yeah I, I think it's great personally in terms of history I think it goes you know Porsche have won more Le Mans than anyone haven't they so they have yeah um Audi, Audi are a close, close second. Yeah. And then it's Ferrari, I think, isn't it? Uh, I, I believe so, yeah. And yeah, as you say, Le Mans 66 or Ford versus Ferrari, depending on where you saw the film. Great movie. And let's remember that the reason that Ford came into the sport, the reason that Ford had a go at Le Mans, was specifically to beat Ferrari. I mean, it was one of the biggest 
FUs in motorsport history. It's amazing. Yeah. Mr. Ferrari wanted to sell his car company so he could concentrate on racing. Ford said, we'd like that. He said, I want to run my race team. And Ford went, ah, no, you can't do that. So Ferrari throws a little bit of a wobbler. And the next thing you know, Ford goes, all right, we'll beat him where it hurts. We're going to Le Mans. And they developed GT40. Such an incredible machine. The interesting thing is... I heard this uh, down rumour, 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 rumour mill. Remember a couple of years ago at Goodwood, Ford had said, oh, we're leaving Le Mans. Our Le Mans programme is over. The GT is no longer a GT Le Mans car. And then at Goodwood 2019, GT Mark II appears going, yeah, well, it's a Ford GT Mark II and this one's got 800 horsepower. And someone who knows about these things who floats in those circles went, why do you think Ford's released an even more powerful, a sillier version of the car? Just putting two and two, they've left Le Mans and now there's a faster one, which means, in theory, maybe, if the person talking to me wasn't a big fat liar, 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 we could actually have Ford versus Ferrari in In the future. Hypercars. And Ford is one of the names that's missing from that list at the moment. Yeah, maybe Mm. let's hope they come back as well. So how much power has that Mark II GT got? Hang on. Ford GT. They'll have to knock some power off to fit within the regulations of the new rule set. Actually, we should just say one interesting aspect of the way these new entries are lining up. 700 horsepower. Right. So, you know, Ferrari are entering under the LMH regulation. So they are building their own chassis. They're building their own prototype to fit the rules. Whereas Porsche, for example, are entering under the LMDH rules, which means they're using a spec chassis and a lot of the powertrain is spec and they're basically bringing their own engine and own bodywork, which surprised me actually. Yeah. I thought, you know, given that their history at Le Mans has been of turning up with a complete package and... I'm winning. Yeah, convincingly. Blowing away the competition. It's rather surprising to me that they're entering with a semi-spec part of the hypercar. Agreed. Regs. So I think also, so if Ford were to come back to take on Ferrari, they'd probably go the LMDH route as well because Ford have a much bigger presence in the United States than they do in European racing. And if you're going to race at Daytona, they have raced in the past with an LMD chassis or the Daytona... DPI, Daytona Approach. DPR, thank you, Zog. And they put the Ecotech motor that eventually went into the GT that was raced at Le Mans. They developed it at Daytona. So it would make sense for them to do something similar again. So, yeah, Alex, I'd love to see a hybrid version of the Ford GT at Le Mans, but I think we're more likely to see an LMDH Ford if Ford were to come back. But heck, I'm thrilled that Ferrari have decided to come back because this is upping the game. This is like having Man United join if you've got a little, you know, local football division or something. Mm. Because, you know, we love Bike Hollis for sticking with it, but they're rubbish, aren't they? Peugeot. It's a long time since they've been competitive. They're going to have to come back and start from scratch. Is Peugeot going to have its horrid new logo on the nose of its hypercar? Yes, it will, yeah. Uh, Yeah. It's horrible. I don't it's mind horrible. it. It's horrible. It's okay. It's, it's a minimalist. It's awful. Well, it's just a rehash of their 1960s logo, I think. It's basically that. The one they've gone back to two generations ago. It's almost identical. So it's a bit of heritage. I don't mind that at all. See, I'm old enough to remember it the first time round. That's why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair, fair. That's like when Fiat reintroduced their original Fiat badge that we hadn't seen for a long time. I thought, oh, yes, it's a Fiat. I remember that, yeah. But, yeah, things are looking good for the WEC. I welcome Ferrari to it. But you know the main reason why Ferrari are coming back to the WEC, don't you? Because they're saving a load of money on F1 because of the way the rules have changed. And they've got money and facilities sitting around that they need to throw at some other bit of motorsport. So why not throw it at Le Mans? Well, there you go. Exactly. They would have had to make something like 400 of their staff redundant because of the new cost-cutting rules in Formula One. So rather than do that, they kept 200 of them to work on a WEC team. So they had a choice of save lots of money and fire lots of people or fire half the people and possibly win prizes elsewhere. It's not necessarily saving money. It's saving how much you're allowed to spend on Formula One. But remember right. that Ferrari is as much a race team as it is a car manufacturer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, racing has always been their 
raison d'etre. So they had staff that were trained to a very high level that they don't want to lose to other teams. So they said, mm, okay. right, let's go to the WEC. Smart. Exactly. And Ferrari's always been yeah, a really good, good protagonist in racing. So, yeah, I didn't realise that, but that makes absolute sense. So... Uh, that's yeah. probably the first time Ferrari have ever made a sensible decision in a very long time, isn't it? Yeah, as you say, Ferrari lives to race. That's been there from the earliest days of the company. They were a racing team first and a road car company second. Now, that may not be quite so much the case in recent years, but nonetheless, racing is absolutely in their DNA. It's right at the heart of the company. So to have them back in endurance racing is going to be fantastic and they've got no shortage of drivers have they because if you think about it Ferrari you've got drivers driving for Haas they've got drivers driving for the Alfa Romeo team they've got drivers driving for their own team they've also got the Ferrari development program they've got a whole bloody panoply of drivers that they could stick in three cars at Le Mans yes who do you reckon they'll have in that car in 2023 will it be Leclerc will it be Kimi you reckon Kimi it'll be Kimi it won't be any of the F1 drivers it'll be people they're either on their way up to F1 or on the way down from F1 so it'll be Kimi Callum Eilert maybe yeah yeah. Uh, very good guess people like that yeah yeah. I'd be rooting for that car if we had Kimi and Callum in the same car I like Kimi Raikkonen I think it's quite funny the Iceman (laughs) we love Kimi Kimi would have to stop halfway through to have an ice cream though wouldn't he it's Le Mans that's what he'd do tipsy Iceman I know what they're doing yeah I think the best advice we can give to anyone right now is if you're planning on going to Le Mans in 2023, book now, because it's going to be an absolute scorcher with Ferrari there, with Peugeot there, with Scuderia Cameron Glickenhaus team. And of course, I'm going to watch by Collis. We'll see you all there at the Guinness tent at eight o'clock on the Saturday night <laughs> after the beer train has well and truly left the station. I shall definitely be there. And we'll definitely be over the COVID hump by then. So oh, yeah, God, yeah, that'll be a good year, I'm sure. <laughs> Who wants to get clattered and fall over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, hands up. up. We'll all be clattered and fall I'll see over. You there, eight o'clock. That's it. You've been listening to Gareth Jones on speed. It's goodbye from Zog. Goodbye. It's goodbye from Sarah. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from Alex. Bye. And it's goodbye from me, Gareth. Our next episode will be a proper Formula One season preview. Because by then, we will have had testing. Enjoy testing in Bahrain. See you guys. Say bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Now. <laughs> To send us an email, see pictures, get song lyrics, join our Facebook fan site, follow us on Twitter, or to find out about sponsorship opportunities, go to garethjones.tv. Gareth Jones on Speed is made in London by Whizbang. Gareth Jones on Speed! Me! Me! me. <laughs>